Hey, welcome back to Watch Later with Leo Vader, an essay series about the overlooked nuggets in gaming that I can't stop thinking about. Today we're going through the complete and total history of blowing into the microphone for the purpose of gaming. Unless I forget to mention something, in which case leaving it out was just another of my classic jokes. But first, let's go all the way back to 1976, to a time where microphone gaming was still unthinkable. This is when the Fairchild Channel F hit the market, the first console with interchangeable cartridges. Then, let's say in 1977, these cartridges would start to become less reliable as time passed. We've all been there. Your favorite Fairchild cart in Math Quiz 2 is on the fritz. You're booting it up to play for the hundredth time, but for some reason it's not loading right. So you yoink the cartridge out, blow on it, and the game works like a charm. People claim that the reason this worked is because the moisture in your breath helps with the circuit connection, though it actually creates rust and further ruins your cartridges in the long term. But I like to think it works because there's just something magical about the action of blowing air towards your games. Like a sneeze without a bless you. You're just letting out a little bit of your soul and passing it to the game for another chance at life. Let's jump now to 1983, when the Famicom shipped in Japan with two controllers. Controller 1 had a start and select button in the middle, but controller 2 had a little microphone instead. And sometimes all it takes is one little idea like that to change the world. The mic was the brainchild of Nintendo engineer Masayuki Umura, who said the feature was intended to capitalize on the karaoke boom in Japan at the time. The microphone essentially functioned like a binary on-off switch. For instance, Takeshi's Challenge asked you to perform activities like singing karaoke or talking while playing slots, but the microphone couldn't really tell the difference. So smart gamers who didn't want to wake up their parents would accomplish these tasks by blowing, which is one of the quietest noises you can make with your mouth, but picks up on a microphone like a howl. Other examples of how the tech was used include an Easter egg in The Hyrule Fantasy, which featured the classic Zelda enemies, the Pole's voice. The instruction manual mentions that they hate loud noises, so gamers soon discovered you can blow, or yell I guess, into the second controller's microphone and instantly kill all of the Pole's voice on screen. It was actually way easier than fighting them normally. That's just one example of the power of blowing into a mic. Kid Icarus would let you haggle with the shopkeeper using the second controller's microphone. The haggling mechanics were essentially, the more sound the better, so just blowing into the mic for a few seconds would bring the prices down to the minimum. Will Wright's Raid on Bungling Bay is one of the most famous examples on the system. In the game's two-player competitive mode, the second player could scream or blow for help, and the game will actually bring in extra enemy forces to attack player one. This was gaming. This was gaming. But in 1985, when the Famicom came to America as the NES, the microphone had been removed. This decision, unfortunately, rendered Nintendo's flagship system a pointless waste of everyone's time, doomed to be rightfully forgotten forever. This lack of microphone functionality paved the way for the dark period, or as I call it, the way greater depression. Nintendo had given us a taste of the moist, windy future of gaming and pulled it away like so many a football on an autumn day. In the late 1990s up through Y2K, systems like the Nintendo 64, the Dreamcast, and the PlayStation 2 all offered microphone peripherals for certain games. But this resurgence marked the beginning of a sad trend in exhalation gaming, to move away from just blowing, acknowledging the mere fact you're making noise, and move instead towards recognizing specific commands. It's a stupid idea, and it's one that idiots would like. Hey you, Pikachu, really? Call me when it's Pikachu. In 2001, we saw the release of the GameCube and its microphone peripheral soon after. This came packaged with Mario Party 6 and 7, and in a mini game like Balloon Busters, you could blow into the microphone to inflate the balloon. Wait, hold on. No, you just say the word bigger? Why? Why wouldn't you blow to inflate the balloon? That's such a layup. They couldn't even give me that. Although in Chibi Robo, there was an Easter egg where you could plug in the microphone and blow into it to knock Chibi Robo over. This wasn't mentioned anywhere, existing just as a rumor to tell around the playground. Almost a subtle message just for me. As if Chibi Robo himself was saying, Leo, look, we can still make blowing into the microphone games. Hang in there, buddy. I love you. And I didn't have to wait long for Chibi Robo's dream to become a reality. Enter the Nintendo DS, the absolute peak of blowing into the microphone. The 2004 launch of the DS marked the beginning of gaming's golden age. This was the first mainstream example of portable blowing gameplay. 
if you don't include the breathalyzer. The dual screen handheld's built-in microphone paved the way for experiences like blowing up balloons in Mario Kart DS's balloon battle mode, blowing to play the spirit flute in spirit tracks, blowing out flames or spinning sacred windmills in Phantom Hourglass, blowing fog off your goggles in Snowboard Kids, blowing bubbles in Nintendogs, spinning fans in Bubble Bobble Revolution, hailing a cab in Grand Theft Auto Chinatown Wars, blowing out candles in Mario Party DS, blowing away dust in Trace Memory, and so much more. This was true gaming. You blew into the mic to do about a hundred things in WarioWare Touched alone. This was the revolution I'd been waiting for. But it wasn't meant to last. Blowing into the microphone must be banned, reads this topic from the GameSpot forums in 2007. It's an annoying, cheap, nasty gimmick, claims deactivated 57D0BC589. Handheld games are built for portability, and gamers complain that it sucked to be at the library or on the bus and realize the only way to progress in their game is to bring the DS up to their face and blast saliva all over it. The jury was in on blowing into the mic, and the verdict was guilty of being stupid. The sentence, death, murdered by the court of public opinion. The method of execution, being mean and wrong. The people being mean and wrong? The jury. Hmm. In 2011, the 3DS released, which had a microphone and was backwards compatible, but didn't have much in the way of blowing going forward. You could blow at the home screen to make the game's titles spin, and WarioWare Gold had some blow games, but clearly they no longer gave a damn about the desires of the exhaling gamer. 2012 saw the release of the PlayStation Vita, which lets you blow into the microphone to confuse enemies in the escape plan and blast enemies with a horn and tear away. Later in 2012, we got the Wii U, which lets you blow to move propeller platforms in Super Mario 3D World. But then, with a whimper, blowing into the microphone disappeared. We are now in the second dark period. I haven't been asked to blow into a mic in years. The Nintendo Switch released without a microphone at all, and Jonathan Blow has turned out to be a major disappointment for me. It seems the only place blowing into the mic exists these days is just as a tool for trolling in online games. Or for ASMR. But when you lose all hope, when your lungs are empty, that's when Jeff Keighley delivers. Maybe we've just spent all this time inhaling for our biggest breath blast yet. Later this year, we'll be seeing the release of the PS5. It ships with the new DualSense controller boasting a built-in microphone. This is a great feature in general, because when playing PS4 online, only half the people I'm playing with are accidentally broadcasting their roommates arguing or their kid begging for food, and I need to hear that from everybody! But that's not all. Jeff Keighley posted a hands-on with the controller in the PS5's Playroom demo, where we saw, once again, the return to the peak of video game interactivity, blowing on a fan to make it spin. Right here, you're actually watching my reaction video for the reveal. So hope is out there, and blowing into the mic may make a return yet. Because if there's one thing we know about Sony, if they put something stupid in their controller, they're gonna make you use it. Thanks for watching Watch Later with Leo Vader. Here's an honorable mention, Bop It Shout! This was a fun topic in our Discord during the production of this video. You can support us on Patreon at any level to join us over there. Or subscribe on YouTube, or share this. Really, any engagement would be great for me. Please, thank you.